What we're going to talk about today is the idea that um, technology is phenomenal. It can do amazing things, but it can also be a phenomenal waste of time if you don't do it right. Um, so it's really about looking at how technology, what, what are the technologies that you can use, and um, what are the best ones, what are the, and I'm not going to go into the specifics, uh, but I'm going to talk about the general principles behind choosing technology and how you can best utilize it for, uh, in this case, volunteering. Um, big part of my presentation will be about the idea of um, planning. I think that's the key to everything. And, um, and using a project management approach, which is a, a little bit different to what would normally be used in volunteering or would be, quite, would be seen as professionalization, but I think is really the movement towards bridging this gap. Really, the, it kind of comes down to, uh, when I'm thinking about communi when I'm thinking about online technologies, I think primarily about two things. Um, communication, which is the root of anything that you do with um, social media, and also with planning, project planning particularly. I think there's been a move, maybe it's, it's something that I've seen happen very successfully in Ireland on a number of projects where projects are, they're project based rather than the traditional volunteers within an organization. Um, and if you start to break down tasks, you start to work in a way that people can actually, A, for time reasons, actually participate in. Also, they can understand the results orientation of, of an overall project and being part of a team. So I have a few examples of, of how that has worked really successfully um, in the last while, um, and in conjunction with using um, communication tools to, to deliver that message. So um, when people talk about uh, social media, particularly or online, on, online technologies, they tend to jump in feet first. Um, and that, to me, is a bit crazy, because there's no point to take five minutes to set up a Twitter account, but what are you going to achieve with it? Um, maybe nothing actually, it might be just a waste of five minutes that you could have spent doing something else. Um, so I think really when it comes to volunteer management, uh, the first thing to think about is your strategic, your own strategic objectives as a volunteer manager, um, or involving volunteers in whatever way you're working in volunteer centres. So what are, you, what, what are your objectives? So um, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to attract more volunteers? Are you trying to get more out of the volunteers that you have? Are you trying to de develop a deeper relationship with them? Are you trying to fill a particular position? Um, are you trying to create a new movement or campaign? Um, who are those people and who are the target audience? This might be very obvious, but when it comes to particularly uh, online technologies, it's very important to know who you're actually dealing with because um, I'm guessing it's the same here, but in Ireland, Meals on Wheels, for example, tends to be actually run by older people. Um, now, if you're running a Meals on Wheels organization, perhaps Twitter and Facebook aren't really the situation, the, the place to be targeting communications with them. Then, you, so you think about the demographics of who you're going to uh, be talking to, um, and then you, talk, you also have to question why, why do they want to get involved, why do you want to get them involved? People's motivations are very different, even now, compared to what they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. People have changed their perspectives. In the last two years, they definitely changed their perspectives. Um, and in dealing with a group of people, a, a, a demographic, a group of people, who are especially working in the world today, who are very results-oriented. So then also, when and where and why and how are these people actually going to participate, or what, um, especially why, well, why I accept to come to, but when and where. Um, the when and where relates to the time commitment. Um, a lot of people are working in, are not, not, or not located in the place that they live, so they can't volunteer necessarily in their local community, but they can in somewhere down the road. They may only have a, a short period of time. So it's all about kind of thinking about all of those questions. While they might seem simplistic, they're actually the basis of everything that you go forward with. Because once you've got the answers to those questions, then you can actually think about what, what your plan is for, for fulfilling your, your objectives. The second part that you need to think about, or one needs to think about, um, is the organisation that you work in, their wider objectives. Um, because dealing with volunteers, um, and particularly in the communication context, is, is an outward facing, tends to be an outward facing communication model. And you're doing that because those people are not part of your organisation, it's not internal to you. So you are more than likely impacting on other communications within the organization in some way, shape, or form, and they need to be consistent. Um, so it's about assessing where your volunteer requirements, your volunteer requirements, um, fit in with the rest of the organization. In smaller organizations, 
that may be fine, you may be very easily able to understand where your strategic objectives fit. But in terms of larger organisations, they may be in direct conflict, or maybe, well, as often happens, we know in our work in volunteer Ireland, that higher up the organisations, there is an acknowledgement that volunteers are very important, but there's no understanding of how they're important, or even value put on really what they actually achieve. Um, it's all like we need volunteers, but you know, we're not putting the resources in place to actually support those volunteers when they're actually in the organisation. So, um, I have a couple of uh, pictures here. Um, this one is actually one I did myself, um, which is just looking about at levels of support, the support network around your organisation. So, obviously, on the green, uh, it's just general awareness of people who are aware of your work, who've heard of your name, but they may not be directly involved. Um, engagement are people, and especially this relates particularly to online um, communications, but engagement it indicates that somebody who's actually, in some way, following on Twitter, fan viewers on Facebook, they have expressed an interest, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually acting upon this. Um, and finally, there's involvement in the centre, which are actually people who are actively participating in your work and supporting you directly. Um, um, I had done this diagram, and then, hilariously, I did a little bit of Googling and discovered that there was a new piece of research out <laughs> only about five days ago um, in DC, and it's about non-profits, specifically about non-profits. And it, it breaks down how people interact online uh, with nonprofits and, and breaks them into six categories. So on the lowest level there, you've observing, which means basically people who just vaguely are aware of what you've done. They may have just seen something. They, they're, they're on the periphery. Following tends to mean following either Facebook or by email, for example, they may be on your email subscription list. Endorsing are people who actually participate in some way, so they tend to have donated. Um, Contributing are people who are actively volunteering. And from there on in, four, five, and six, so only somebody who's a lead volunteer, and leading tends to be somebody who's in a governance position or actually on the board or whatever. So um, the big thing for me here is that in terms of strategy, what we want to be doing is hoovering in these people, the observing, the following, endorsing people, and actually turning them into the top term. Communication is the key to the whole thing, the whole sorry. But actually, it's also, um, it's volunteer management and volunteer and project management that will actually turn somebody from a follower or an endorser into a leader. It's the, the ongoing communication, the feeling that they've achieved something, feeling that they're part of something that will actually give them that, will, will turn them into that. And that's what ultimately we all want because they're the, the really valuable volunteers who actually act for us.